Hey there, good morning and good evening, my dear brothers and sisters. A warm welcome to one and all of you, and I greet you in the name of our loving Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. How are you all doing? I hope you're having problems in life. If I would be saying, "Oh, you are all good and uh, you have no, you have zero troubles," is what I believe that would be a lie, right? We all have problems in life, don't we? Right? We all have troubles. We all have sickness. We all have some or other problems that are bothering us enough, right? And in the midst of those situations is when our faith is being put to test. Bible says, and I really want you to understand: the more our faith is put to test through these troubles, our character is being refined. The perseverance is being refined. Our character is put to test. our faith levels are put to test yeah so what happens is the doctor will put you to certain blood tests right periodically every 3 months every 6 months some patients who have terrible problems every week probably or every day yeah some highly diabetic patients you know they may have to go through the blood test every day for a certain period right and only then the doctor diagnoses and uh, gets an idea as how the levels are functioning or how the body is functioning based on the levels and then he comes to a conclusion on his diagnosis and then he puts him on the right treatment similarly the blood test is nothing but what troubles we go through the body or our mind soul our life right are the ones which is similar to be equated right similar to the blood test it can be equated to that blood test um i would like to read one of the verses right my brethren count it all joy when you fall into various trials knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience so the beginning the starting point for patience is faith that is put to test how faith is put to test through trials through problems trouble makers all of a sudden your closest ally the closest friend <clears throat> would uh, you know raise his voice against you or maybe you know they 20 years your friends suddenly you know there become there comes a fight and it hurts you so much separation takes place between husbands and wife because of some problems and uh, you you are fired of your job and you lost your job and you know and or you lost your loved ones anything it could be and it's not easy what i'm talking through is not easy at all right maybe all go through those kind of problems in life smaller problems bigger problems medium scale problems any problem is a problem right so in this world there are troubles and only when those troubles enter into your life bible says count it all joy what is this <laughs> why because your faith is put to test and that will be lead to you know manufacture protection of patience and patience will bring perfection the next verse james 14 but let patience have its perfect work that you may be perfect two times you will see that perfection and complete and lacking nothing yeah many of us want to become like paul become like jesus become like god and all that but you don't want to go through any changes you don't want to go through any trial you don't want any problem you don't want any trouble you don't want anything it's not that you're going for trouble you're going after trouble or going in search of trouble and problems and all it, it, you the world offers you full of troubles <laughs> and mr devil is your number one adversary right because you have accepted jesus as your lord of lords and king of kings and you don't have to go in search of any troubles and problems it will come in search of you yeah just stay at the same place <laughs> so my point is like you are his adversary and he is your adversary and obviously the spiritual warfare continues all the way to your last breath if some some pastor some teacher some false prophet is telling you oh this is only for a mere moment they will quote verses like second corinthians 4:17 oh this affliction is only for a mere moment that affliction is only for a mere moment another affliction will be kept in store in reservation it will come again that only that that also will last for a mere moment and why because a god is faithful he says i will not allow you to anything that you cannot bear beyond what you could be uh, what you could be able to bear and tolerate i will make a way for you to escape 1 corinthians 10:13 i'm talking from scriptures okay there are many people quote the second corinthians 4:17 and they say for only a certain season you will go through temptation after that lifelong no temptation no problem no trouble no 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 sorry sorry this is a continuous recurring 
process progressive and recurring process yeah but it is only for a stipulated time don't worry never ever take any problem any trouble any sickness any any disease anything that you have or permanent of lifelong i have need to be like that no no our, our god is faithful philippians once it says he who began the good work in you will 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 help you right he will complete it i will read the verse for you someone is actually wanting this that's why holy spirit is triggering me to speak on these lines being confident this very thing of this very thing that he who began a good work in you will complete it during the day of jesus christ complete it our god will never leave us any one of us in the middle of something you know that's not his habit yeah he will stay with you he will ensure that he will help you and he will take you through completion yeah that's the beauty of our god our god is not someone who will leave us in the middle and run away oh i got intimidated no intimidation our god is you know no who can intimidate god the father tell me the demons will be intimidated demons will be frightened you know they were they, you know they came running to jesus saying oh jesus have you come to torment us in the name of jesus you go and stand the demons will tremble and what happens is over a period of time your character gets refined your perseverance skills goes to the higher side which means what you will have complete understanding of any situation which is nothing but in simple terms you are matured christian your spiritual maturity would be hitting to the mark of 9 out of 10 the scale of 10 right you will you would have gone to 9 out of 10 why because you would have gone through so many trials and you just know oh my god had taken good care of me all these years how many problems how many troubles how many sickness how many diseases i was bedridden my father helped me did he not yeah i was jobless did he not help me to get a different job yeah fine it's it's okay again i went through this situation fine my god who took care of me in the past is capable to take care of me now and forever amen learn to say that amen as an amen or the promises of god second corinthians 120 hebrews 138 says that he is the same unchanging god forever yesterday today and forever jesus christ you know all right some one of you listening to me i know that you are in terrible distress that's the reason holy spirit is making me to talk on this subject are you sick and tired of seeing problems 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 i'll tell you what you're growing stronger you passed your graduation probably you are in your phd too many troubles in your life you are in your phd beloved there is a day coming that you god will use you as a mighty instrument to the hopeless you will be the one who will give hope through your testimonies you will be the witness for christ you will not know that now but years later when god uses you as his mighty instrument and i will tell you what you won't go and stand like a deprived or a distressed or a uh, you know or a, or a person who is in trouble when he is going to raise you as a witness no you will be strong enough to lead others why because you you know if you're not strong enough how can god use you tell me he will build you you know don't look at the externals right look at the internals that's why bible says god looks at not the outward appearance but he looks at the condition of your heart what is the condition of your inner man what is the condition spiritual quality and the spiritual strength so when you are consistently put to test when you are consistently put to trials your spiritual strength grows to the higher side higher side and therefore you're all built now you know what when you're all built no you will not be able to sit idle why because you want to share the love of christ with others and you will ask god take me sir. may i share this love may i share this great things that god had done for me in my life with others that will be your situation that will be your longing that much you will long and boy because your character changes your perseverance gone up your faith is gone up your patience gone up and now that love starts bubbling in your heart that you want to be a blessing to others so do not do not do not feel left alone dejected dejected or rejected please god is definitely working in you my brother my sister take heart and and please cooperate with god he's going to do great things through you and this is a passing cloud our life is like a passing cloud yeah one day all of us will have to be dead and gone but in this short span of time learn to be a person who works with god and allow him to do his works in you 
Warm welcome to the series where we are dealing through the subject of oxymorons. I am in the process of um, discussing from the book of Romans chapter 9 where we are dealing with four different sections. I am done with two sections and we are on the third section. Um, <coughs> excuse me, the first section was Israel's rejection of Christ. Oxymorons will, will, will always be in the spree of rejecting Christ and his love and his doctrines and his laws and commandments. And Why? Because they don't agree. Simple. And we took Israel as a case study. It's not all about Israel. It's about you and me, right? I asked you to replace your name in the place where Israel has been quoted and uh, has been referenced in the Bible. And then we went into the second section in the same chapter from verses 6 to 13. We discussed Israel's rejection. Now God's turn to reject Israel. And there is a purpose through which he justifies why he rejects. Is something we discussed too, isn't it? So... I definitely want you to take a note of these sessions. These sessions are very, very, very important. And we are in lesson number 26 now. Right? And you, you may understand if, if this topic is getting lengthier and longer and uh, it's just not winding up, which means it's very important. The Holy Spirit is trying to convey something very, very dominant, important, significant. Huh? And we are stepping into the third section and that is Israel's rejection and God's justice. God's purpose is definitely dominant to reject Israel because Israel forced. Israel means you and me also. It applies to Gentiles, everyone. Put your name in the place of Israel. Likewise, God's justice in the sense God is judgmental and now he is proving his justice and judgment, explaining the reasons why he would reject a prominent nation, his own chosen people, his own chosen race, his own chosen generation, Israel. Now, do not limit it to Israel. You and I are chosen children of God. You have accepted Christ. You have been baptized. Yeah, There is remission of sins that took place in your life. And God forgave all your sins. And God accepts you as his beloved child, beloved daughter, beloved son, isn't it? But... In the journey of your spiritual life, for some reasons you derailed. You started moving away from the control of God. In the sense, God never controls, by the way. I want you to know this. Our God doesn't have to control anyone. God offers the free will. Hey, my son, my daughter. You understand me? You're welcome to come and work with me. Because my love is steadfast. My love is uh, uh, everlasting and my mercy is are everlasting, I'm bound to compassion and all that. I have patience to wait. But I will not stay with your spirit forever. Neither will I hold my anger forever. God's wrath will descend on his people when they would be consistently rejecting his command, rejecting his commandment, rejecting his instructions, his doctrines, his laws, right? His principles, his teachings. You consistently keep on rejecting. What happens? Imagine if your child is consistently not listening at all. 10 years you waited. 20 years you waited. Oh, 30 years you waited. No, 40 years you waited. Some point that father loses his patience. He, he goes mad. I'm telling you, 40 years, if somebody is patient with someone, someone, my goodness, that guy deserves for a, you know, one of the most... Like Nobel Prize, he deserves for a Nobel Prize, the most uh, uh, the, the award which is uh, honorable, right? Uh, it's, it's, I'm taking an extreme case. My father in heaven is someone like that, you know, very, very patient. You can't even measure. There is no unit to measure his patience. In, if you have to measure it by weight, it will be some trillion tons. You want to measure it by width, it will be like trillion miles in width and length and breadth. Yeah, immeasurable. My father is completely patient. Enough. Everlasting mercies means what? There is no unit to it. But only the human beings know. We are absolutely super talented and capable enough to even irritate a, a loving father. God who is bound to compassion, mercies, favor, love and all that. Psalm 145, 8 and 9. Psalm 147, 11. Psalm 103, 11. Isaiah 54, 10 and 11. And I say 55, 8 onwards you read. This is this all talks about the compassion of God, the character of God, how merciful he is. Even that God 
we can literally you know kind of you know in the, in the, in the modern words we we can piss him i'm pissed with you man you know <laughs> when god makes that statement who is going to come at your rescue if god says i'm pissed with you my child yeah that's a modern english i'm sorry to use that word but it's not a bad word uh, in the sense i'm mad at you i've gone mad at you you have drove you drove me berserk something like that right now now we all understand this is a decent language one nasty language one decent language but the meaning is the same and that's not a bad word right psalm 103 9 i want you to read afterwards right he will not strive with the spirit of man who is rebellious who is ignorant who is reluctant who is resistant uh, who insults the son of god blood covenant the holy spirit always hebrews 10 29 huh god's wrath will descend on that guy one fine morning he will see that god walks off his life but you know what Oxy- i'm talking about oxymoron so oxymoron you were an oxymoron consistently rejecting on one fine day when god left you you will not feel the change why because you had been living in your own world only thing is god was merciful with uh, to be with you and he makes a choice to walk away from your life rejecting you and you will not feel the change you know what see when you're going in a train by by a train right you will barely feel the tracks are changing where well, it's a slight jerk that's it but you know what when you literally intently focus Uh, maybe you go to the driver's engine you see it's just a mighty change and they have built the railway engineering is built in a subtle way that you the, the passengers don't feel the jerk slight jerk that's it but it's a big track change right it's it's, it's, it's a mighty deviation it's a 30 degree deviation sometimes it's like a 360 degree deviation um it depends not 360 degree 180 degree deviation is it you won't feel anything but that's a mighty deviation god walks off your life and devil walks into your life you will not feel anything you will continue to go on go on go on go on go on one fine day you're dead and gone you will open up and you will see you are landing up in the place of torment that's called as hell and devil also will like to keep it that way you know the more you are led to la- towards light and he is giving you all the awareness and all that you will wake up you will reject devil and accept god correct no so the devil will keep things going in the same way you will feel no changes same prosperity same health same healing same peace this and that same church same pastor same chair 30 years 40 years and all that one day you will be dead and gone as an oxymoron as a traditional christian as a christian who is ignorant of doctrines and who doesn't want to hear and all that many of my catholic relatives i try telling them the truth they reject are they my adversaries no i love them i pity them because i know they are oxymorons and i know their destiny is like a fire sorry i am not saying this my bible says this why man why my brother why my sister because god rejected you and who is at your rescue now no one what a sad situation isn't it that was my condition at the age of 18 and you know what i didn't even know i was an oxymoron and nobody came and preached and taught to me like this but god was merciful how oh, is amazing grace and mercies gave me this bible somebody came you know i i studied in a institute it's a christian institution i would not like to name um but there when i joined i was put up in hostel and uh, they used to have prayer cells and all that and and one of the prayer cell leader encouraged me hey you are coming from catholic background i said why don't you go and book a, buy a bible and start reading it i said yes i'm going to do it come let's go and i got that bible and you know what that bible is right in front of me well now i have many bibles all of them are kjvs <laughs> because i i have bibles of um, i have i'm used bible one bible for teaching one bible for preaching uh, one bible for studying systematic study and all are kjvs and i do have other reference bibles i do have niv versions i have read nivs and all that it's i'm not against it i'm little attached towards kjv but i will have i have three or four bibles now um where i have a systematic way of marking things what i have taught and preached i i should be aware right so my desire is i should have preached every single chapter before i close my eyes and land up in eternity that's my objective maybe maybe i will end up preaching 10000 sermons i don't care yeah i want to do it i want to until my last breath i will continue to talk about the glory of god about the grace of god about his love and everlasting mercies how do you get this idea in the world to reject the father and can you imagine how much you tortured and harassed the father that he 
is pushed to a state that he would reject you and me. Huh? I can't imagine that. And that's exactly what I'm going to get into now. Israel's rejection. Israel's rejection is confined and conclusive. There is no one who will come to your rescue. Can you imagine a state like that? Bunch of demons living inside of you and outside you. Wherever you go, demons. And the Father in heaven is at their distance. And the Holy Spirit is at their distance, watching at you, grieving. And he's still interceding for you. And obviously, Jesus, your elder brother, is crying, sitting there, interceding. Is this the reason why I died for my brother, for my sister? Is this the reason I died? Is this the reason why I was crucified? Is this the reason why my beard was ripped off, stripped naked and made me to hang and they nailed me? And they bruised me. What do you answer, Jesus? Tell me, during the White Throne Judgment. And God's justice is always, is always perfect. There can be no blemish in his judgment. There can be no blemish, no errors. Even the best of the justice, chief justice, right, who is in the Supreme Court, even he can make mistakes because he's a human being. There are possibilities, right? By law, he would have missed certain things and he would have convicted an innocent, a criminal or a criminal as innocent, right? It's possible, quite possible. Human errors are inevitable. But my God, the Father in heaven, is justice. <laughs> they are awesome. They can never, never, ever go wrong. Trust me. You don't have to trust me. You trust God and his, and his word, holy word. Right? I'm speaking from the word of God. All right. Israel's rejection and God's justice. I think I explained enough on the title. Now I'm getting into the subject. Romans 9 verse 14. What shall we say then? When Bible talks like this, especially Mr. Paul the Apostle. If he's going to ask you some question, you better stop there. Better stop there. Which means why? You need to first rewind the tape. What has he spoken? You know, 10 verses before that question. You read it again. It's always nice. You know, that's the way because Paul is a very, very complicated guy. He is complicated means he's a scholar. He's super intellectual, very, very tough. Even Peter couldn't understand some of his letters. And Peter says, you people don't understand his letter. You better don't preach and teach about that. In other words, zip your mouth and sit quiet. That's what he says. Peter, say, take and read second Peter, I think. Towards the last, he writes this. Yeah. And although Peter was rebuked by Paul, right, <laughs> in public, in other words, Peter was insulted by Paul. Paul was literally short-tempered. And see the love, the brotherly love they have for each other. Wow. Amazing, isn't it? Of course, they are in paradise. Probably they are hearing me. See, they, brother Wilson is talking about me and you. <laughs> Paul would be saying that and Peter would be giggling and probably they are. What a wonderful time in paradise. You Would you want to miss that? I don't want I want to meet everyone all the way from Adam and to the second Adam, Jesus. And after that, Paul, Peter, Thomas, Philip, Bartholomew, Simon. Yeah, everyone I want to meet. Okay. And I, the first person whom I want to meet is, you know, many people want to meet Paul and Peter. You know what? Whom I want to meet? Not even Jesus. The first person whom I want to meet is Brother Stephen. The first blood witness. I would ask him, where did you get that faith, brother? Because Paul himself had not been given birth. He was remaining as Saul under his command. Stephen was killed and, and martyred. And uh, you know, the Bible was written by Paul. And Paul himself did not become Paul. He was still Saul. Where did you get that faith? How were you able to get that faith so quickly? Although you did not see Jesus, you did not, you were not a follower, you didn't, you were not a disciple, you were in the early age Christianity. Ah, oh, amazing. I think I will weep over him. When I think of Stephen, I feel like weeping. Wow. Amazing brother. Amazing brother. And he was the one who was, that, who was a turning point for Saul. You know, who became Paul later. Because the guy's confession. Forgive them for they knew not what they are doing. Similar thing what Jesus had spoken from the cross. I am sure that touched Saul's heart. And that's the reason God broke him. Why? Because he's willing to change. But he doesn't know how to change. And Saul was broken by Paul, uh, I mean, by God, uh, by Jesus, and he became Paul. All right. Now, what shall we say then? What shall we say? What more should I tell you? Simple, no? In, in, a, in, a, in a colloquial language or in a layman language. What, what more do you want me to say? Huh? Already I told you enough. 20 years I've been preaching. 
10 years i've been telling you the same story you are doing the same mistakes you are repeating the mistakes you are not listening to me why are you wasting my time please get lost from my office or you call the office boy throw him out of my cabin right if he, if some of the guys are very arrogant and strong no some bosses they don't have patience they are not listening you don't listen to me why the hell i should listen to you get lost out of my sight this is what it means <laughs> but paul is very gentle hmm? he is what shall we say then what more should i tell you what more could i explain to convince you oxymorons no hard nuts to crack i have explained from the life of moses and samson and all these guys no we did a case study it's in lesson uh, i don't know it's early stages we spoke about samson moses i remember doing that no no huh? bunch of oxymorons now let me let's move on is there unrighteousness with god next important question these two questions are good enough for me to spend another 10 hours to answer this question but i don't have much time isn't it i have to break this into two three sessions i think yeah I, this this the session is going to end in another 5 minutes okay now let me explain this what paul is trying to say here is already i have explained but i am just giving you some extended explanations many a times we human beings tend to think from human standpoint why because our flesh is weak and on top of that the adamic sin is still in reigning in us our blood flesh cells all these things has ad- adamic sin the first adam who committed that sin yeah he was a, he was a rebel disobedient never paid attention was sluggish lazy yeah never to uh, took god for granted okay that old man he comes let me talk to him it's fine he never believed him he called god a liar that's what it means no god told clearly hey the day you eat it you will be dead man and the devil comes and tells you will not be dead that guy is lying this guy believes the devil then what do you call him as rebel insulting god and his holy covenant and his whole and his relationship and his fellowship and his friendship what not isn't it and then he blames god this woman whom you gave was the one who made me to sin therefore you are the one who is the reason for me to be in this state god could have aroused in anger and burnt them and you know this is enough is enough let me not have this world created again holy spirit come fill it with water and darkness let's go back to genesis 1 and uh, verses 1 and 2 if i was god i would have literally done that enough is enough why because i had so much of trust in lucifer ezekiel 28 isaiah 14 take and read and that fellow became devil because he wants to overtake me and overthrow me and kill me violently and take over my throne and that's the reason i created someone not as an angel but in my own image having the trust and faith that this person is never going to betray me or ditch me why because it's as good as like ditching myself but i gave that free will and now this guy has raised his heel against me why the hell should i you know make a, another effort to send my uh, only son you know second adam and again you know t- carry it forward for generations and all that why this headache let me relax with my son anyway i'm happy in, pa- in in heaven with my only beloved son and the holy spirit will take care of all of this uh, enough is enough if i was god i would have certainly made the decision but our god is having so much of compassion so much of trust and confidence in the mankind why because his image is in us the soul that you have no the inner man it's nothing but god if god god's what say the spirit of god is divided into trillion portions right yeah if you count the population of the earth maybe there were like trillion people who are born and gone right if you take a census assume this trillion portions he divides it until the last baby that's going to be born according to revelation 20 right 2010 um and then he makes up the plan that he is going to take care of this mankind and all that you know wow, what strategy it is you know how tough it is to plan this ahead and god only knows when jesus is going to come for the second time battle of armageddon and the thousand years rule in jerusalem and this and that but god never limits his love and compassion towards his mankind towards his people why because his image is in them and that's where the beauty of god is he never steps back once he decides he moves ahead and the character of any believer in christ also will be similar to that yeah You, have you seen people walking 10 steps and then coming backward no 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 this is not going to work for me many people who were water baptized they went back to 
you know catholicism and traditional christian and this and that and people who came from other religion they went back to their religion why because this is too tough our god is not someone like that right he had that confidence that somehow i will make this work and this fellow is questioning that such a god of that caliber you know you were a liar and it is because of you i am in this state why did you create me he is asking the creator and yet he was patient enough and that is exactly i'm just token i'm just taking one example and explaining you the answer and or answering this question is there unrighteousness with god even at some point even job right started talking against god what is wrong in me why would god push me to such situation and you see all these fellows are mocking me i become a mockery and my the day i was born deserves to be cursed and this and that why because these uh, these three four guys were sent by devil they were agents of devil they were tr- kindling the anger kindling that the anger job could have made a simple choice i will shut up why because i know my god is watching over me let them come and talk why should i talk let people talk anything they want these guys would have waited for 2 3 days and they would have gone but you know what they ended up staying there for 11 months to 12 months i think that's what history says i explained that in the series of job can you believe somebody camping there to irritate one guy for a year devil will go to any extent to irritate you to call god the father or to declare god the father as unrighteous god watch out on the words that proceeds of your mouth beloved situations that are against you in the midst of the problems problematic moments troubles and people please don't open your mouth just zip your mouth and go to god pour out anything that is in your heart to god tell him why am i going through this please explain help me understand i'll tell you what he is so compassionate he will tell you yeah but don't challenge god by any other means and that is what he dislikes i would like to stop here right is there unrighteousness with god i took two examples one from job and one from adam that's good enough there is no unrighteousness in 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 god certainly not bible says i didn't say it. paul says inspired by the holy spirit verse number 14 romans 914 certainly not i would like to sing a song with that we close and we continue from where we left as a beautiful hymn right ascribe greatness ascribe greatness to the lord a god his work is perfect and all his ways are just <clears throat> ascribe greatness to the lord a god his work is perfect and all his ways are just a god of faithfulness and without injustice righteous and upright is he a god of faithfulness and without injustice righteous and upright is he my lord jesus righteous and upright righteous and upright righteous and upright you are my lord jesus righteous and upright righteous and upright righteous and upright you are heavenly father we want to thank you we want to appreciate you that one song is enough which describes who you are who you were who you are going to be you are the unchanging god there is no unrighteousness in you i want i want you to deal with my oxymoronic brothers and sisters whoever may have anything against you maybe there is bitterness against god because my situations are not changing yeah strife against god maybe they are judgmental against god please please be compassionate extend your mercies for few more years few more days few more months and please touch them in jesus name we pray amen god bless you subscribe to our channel get access to all our playlists watch all these videos and share it with your near ones dear ones continue to remember me and our ministries in your personal prayers pray for me at least every day 10 seconds and i will meet you soon in the next session we will continue from where we left right romans 9 and verse 15 onwards we will continue to meditate god bless you take